Oh, shit. <laughs> I was just... Ch oh. Nigga, my heart. I was just about to start this video and it was a notification on my on my iPad. Y'all can't see it, but all I saw was Donald Trump dead 86 and I was like, "Oh my god, did he die?" And child, this is his sister. I mean, I wasn't going to be excited if he died. And, you know, I'm not excited that his sister died. I'm just more laughing because I couldn't... <laughs> it was so shocking. <laughs> Too bad you guys couldn't be in my head to see how I just, what I was thinking. Anyway, you guys. <laughs> What's up, Rockstars? It's Rox coming to you today with a review for... Um, love... Uh, what is that? Talk, what? Power Book 4, Forest Season 2, the finale, which would also be Episode 10, you guys. Kind of a lackluster finale. Not bad. Not bad. I enjoyed it. I, I don't have any complaints this season. But yeah, just... I mean, I guess if we were going to say what was the best episode of this season, I would say Episode 8. Okay, when Diamond finally realized that Diamond is Diamond and not David. Okay, but anyway, we'll talk about it more at the end of the video, guys. Let me, let me get... Let me get through this, okay? The review. Let's get to it, shall we? <sighs> Child, I still am recovering from the, the, the YSAP news. Okay, you guys. So, uh, the show starts with time, Tommy telling Diamond that Vic actually is the um, the snitch. And Diamond's like, dang, Tommy, I told you. And he is like, I know, my bad, my bad. I swear I'm going to fix this. I mean, I told you I can't go back to jail. If Trey find out about all this, we're going to be dead. And uh, Tommy said, Che is not going to find out about this. I'm going to work it all out. I know you don't know me that well. I'm from New York. You're from Chicago. You just met me and everything. But trust me, I am going to handle this. Che is not going to find out anything that, that we have to do with this. This is just going to be strictly on Miguel. We're going to become the connect. And we're going to take down Vic at the same time. All this going to happen concurrently. But you know, Diamond, he ain't really too hopeful. He's looking at Tommy like he don't really trust him. Now, Tommy meets Vic on top of the roof, and, um, you know, when Vic go up there, Vic is looking around, he was just like, uh, so, uh, wh wh why, why, we, we, why we meeting on the roof? Wh wh why we couldn't meet on the ground? I mean, the ground was fine. I was just walking on the ground, and it was no problem. <laughs> why we up here? Then Diamond shows up, you know, Vic was like, oh, shit. You know, they thanking him for bringing him up to the north side and everything. You know, they couldn't have did this without you, Vic. So now we got Tommy fixing it. He tells uh, Vic that he's meeting up with Miguel's cartel hookup anyway. And, um, you know, Tommy wants Vic to be there. You know, you gonna be there, right, Vic? And Vic was just like, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I guess I'm gonna be there. <laughs> That Vic looking like shit. I'm not really sure what I should be doing looking at you guys like, um, I mean, are we good? Yeah, Tommy was like, yeah, we good. Don't worry about it. You know, you go. And so when uh, Vic walk away, you know, he's still kind of off. He, don't, he, don't, he ain't really feeling it, it either, you know. And Diamond was like, look at him. All right. He looked nervous as shit. And Tommy was just like, yeah, because he's a dead man walking. That's the damn why. So we didn't gave Vic something to think about. Now, Tommy takes it on over to Shantae, the show sh uh, stopper's gym, broke in. She was like, motherfucker, I know one thing. You better not try to break your ass up in my shit again, okay? And let me tell you something about you. I'm sick of you thinking that I work for you. I don't work for you. I work with you, okay? I don't like this whole setup. I don't like the way that you've been treating me these days. Tommy was like, my bad. I'm sorry. I know it's been a whole lot. She was like, I'm starting to think that you don't even have a plan. He was like, oh, yeah, I got a plan. L let me show you something, okay? But we don't see whatever it is that he was about to show her. N what we do see is Tommy take it on to the house. And when he comes in the door, Kate is there. And he's just like, oh, Ma, what are you doing here? And she was just like, I'm here because JP said that I could be here. And he was just like, listen, Mom, you can run in and out of my life all you want, okay? I'm used to that shit. But don't do that shit to JP. He don't deserve that. And she was just like, oh, don't you worry about it. I'm not doing nothing to JP. She was like, oh, and guess what? I know that Darnell is alive. And he was like, what? Who told you that? 
Who the hell you think? Because who all know? But the people that's in that house, I mean, other people on the street know, but they ain't talking to Kate. But yeah, JP told her and he was like, yeah, because I didn't tell you because I couldn't trust you, okay? Because every time you come around, you make things worse. He was just like, oh, fuck you, Tommy. You are not perfect. And he was just like, and neither the hell are you. Stay the fuck away from D-Mac. You know, that's going to be the best for him. And she was just like, you know what? Well, I got a little news for you. D-Mac is not even in that little military school you sent him off to. He left. Tommy can't take it no more. Ma, I took him there because he killed a cop. She was like, oh my God, did he? Yes, fool. Why do you think, do you think that we just did that because a nigga stole a pack of cigarettes from the liquor store? No, he is in real trouble here, okay? Tommy tried to have you do this and you couldn't do it. You sent the nigga on the errand like Tommy said, so deal with the Kate. Tommy is just like, Kate, you make everything worse. You need to go away. Now, speaking of the nephew, D-Mac, Darnell, if you will. Okay, you got to say Darnell. Okay, you got to say it like that. You can't say Darnell. You got to say it the way JP say. Darnell. <laughs> it's always <hard. laughs> Darnell. Say it with me. Darnell. Okay, y'all got it good. Darnell is still over at his homeboy's house, okay? And his homeboy was just like, damn, when you gonna leave? Like, your dad didn't smooth things over with Tommy. Like, you guys can't get out. You can't get out and get about. And d Mac tried to in impersonate how his dad was. He's like, you know how he is. Darnell, you can't talk to Tommy. Let me talk to Tommy, you know? I was like, I'd do a much better um, JP if I may say so myself. Thank you. And so his friend was like, dang, your dad pussy. Like, you know, he really don't want you to get back a CBI. You know, and Darnell is just like, yeah, you right. But guess what? I'm going to be out there. CBI run through his blood. It's in his veins. This is what he do. He ain't got to listen to JP and Tommy and Kate. And his boy was like, well, guess what? I got some heat for you. Okay, now just try not to kill another cop. And, you know, Darnell, oh, man, you know, he excited because nothing makes Darnell happier than to have a gun. Then his homeboy was like, but listen, the street's a little different since you've been gone. You know, now they got a coalition. It's all these rules and regulations. You can't just be out there doing what the hell you want to do. Okay, so he was like, well, good thing I'm not in CBI, huh? I was just like, boy, this Darnell. Ooh, he get on my nerves, maybe even worse than Tariq. Whoever wrote Tariq's character wrote the same character for Darnell, I'm, I'm convinced, okay? Because they trying to piss us off with Darnell for sure. This little nigga get on my nerves talking about he do what he want. Now, let's jump over to Jannard. Jannard is in the chair. Diamond's cutting him. And, you know, Jannard is salty because he feel like Tommy got his girl in danger, okay? And, and Diamond was just like, I mean, it's Shantae the show shop stopper. Like, what do you expect? Nobody can tell that girl what to do. Tommy ain't trying to order her around. She had a choice. She said she wanted to do it, honey. Shantae does what Shantae want to do. He's like, oh, nigga, you right about that. Okay. If he don't know shit else, he know that that girl's head is thick. So, uh, what's up with a uh, mad dog? You know, he only 16. And Diamond was just like, so, 16-year-old motherfuckers gotta die from something, too. You know, he ain't worried about it. Okay? So was Leon, and look at where Leon is. So what's ever good for the goose is good for the gander. And Diamond was just like, but you know, it ain't even no big deal. You know, me and Tommy got some big things brewing. Okay? Jannard was like, word? Word? Like, wh what's them big things exactly? Well, um, well, we, we ripped off the Serbs and pinned it on Miguel. Okay, and I was just like... Now, one of you guys made a really good point in the comments last week, and you said that you can tell that Di Diamond is starting to get aggravated with the fact that Tommy makes all these moves without him and that it wasn't going to last because Diamond is used to being the, the shot caller. When Diamond had his foot in both the criminal world and civilization, you know, um, he, he, he was straddling the fence, so he was distracted, so that's why he was kind of letting Tommy take the lead, but now that Diamond is fully back in, he might not take too well to, uh, Tommy pulling all the, sh calling all the shots, and I get that. Okay, that's fine. My problem here is, right when you find out that you guys have a high-level snitch in your operation, which means that your shit is not strong right now, why would you tell Jannard that? I understand that that's your brother, but it's just sort of like, how about we keep everything close to the vest? Because honestly, even though Diamond thinks that he can trust Jannard, if he really would sit down and think about it, Jannard is not trustworthy. 
okay? Even though Jannar don't really have nothing to do with this situation, it's just sort of like, you still make it. So I was just like, Diamond, I I'm gonna need Diamond. If he plan on coming back bigger and stronger next season, you know, big Diamond, I'd sell drugs. I'm the kingpin. I got a big body Benz and a Rolls Royce truck and all. I'm gonna need him to make better decisions because this, that, that, you telling Jannard got on my nerves. But whatever, you know, when, when he finishes, you know, Jannard is like looking at himself in the mirror. He was just like, you know what? He back. Okay, new nigga. All right, nigga, go away. Shit. <laughs> now let's jump over to Maria. Maria's at work and um, her girl there, you know, I was just like, why did they give this this role to this Asian girl as a nurse? And she's sitting there talking to Maria. If that shit that she was saying didn't sound like it was supposed to come from a black nurse, here goes somebody else getting a black person job, okay? But here she go, girl, what is wrong with you? You just, you must really be smitten with somebody. You just going on and on like, you girl, you must really like this Tommy. I was so sick of her. <laughs> I said, Maria, don't be telling that bitch nothing. Maria was just like, mm -hmm, I love my man. You know, my man's so good to me. You know, he see me, I see him. All right. And uh, yeah, they fixing to go. You know, she got her Barcelona tickets and everything. I said, them must be wide class if you work for a reservation you would know those must be wide class i'm talking about like open the most expensive no restricted seat in the plane okay because you just carrying them around y'all don't even know when you're leaving okay but yeah she excited she said yeah she going they going on a trip she's so excited about this trip i said girl i'm excited too but you ain't going nowhere now, Vic goes and tells uh, Stacy that um, Tommy is meeting with the Estrada cartel, okay? And it's going to be happening soon. You know, Stacy, I need a time and a day. And he was just like, I, I don't have a time and a day yet. They haven't, that's to be determined. And she was just like, mm -hmm. well, we still can't let you go, Vic. And he was just like, you know what, fuck this. Every time I give you something, you move the marker. You just going to keep on moving the marker. I'm always going to be involved in this. You're never going to put me in witness uh, protection. And, and the hubby was like, investigator hubby was just like, I know it's rough. And I know she don't have no bedside manner. But <laughs> you just do us this solid and I promise you, you're going to be done. And Stacy jumps in, yes, yes, um, yes. If, if that's right, if you can get it done, get us the date and the time, we will... Er we will arrest Tommy and we will pick you up and wish you off to 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 uh protection before they know it within an hour. I said that's too long. Okay? That's too long. I would actually prefer to be whisked off to witness protection before any of that. Okay? Like Vic don't need to have any more contact with Tommy. But Stacy ain't listening. Now, Vic, you know, Vic is just I feel sorry for Vic. He actually is the only person on this whole show that I actually feel bad for. Because Vic has just been dealt a bad hand. Vic is not a bad guy, okay? Vic was just trying to do Vic. And, and, and look at where he done landed. So anyway, Vic meets with Claudia, okay? And she was just like, why have you told me to come here? Because they are at the house, the family house, okay? In Walter Flynn's private lair, if you will, okay? This was just the area just for the family to discuss the business and things that was going on. And this irony has not been missed on Miss Claudia. So Vic was just like, uh, you know what? I'm going to give all this shit to you. You should have had it anyway. I mean, dad just gave it to me because he was pissed at you because you was a woman and everything. But you were smarter and you the one that really wanted it anyway. I ain't want this shit. You know what? So I'm just going to sign the whole, all the estate over to you, you know, to you. But I just need you to admit to me that you tried to get me killed. Okay. So, you know, at first, Claudia, she was trying to just go on and um, it keep on saying that she didn't try to get him killed. Um, you know, she was like semantics because I ain't really try to get you killed. And he was like, OK, so you can just tell me then that you didn't tell me that the assassins were coming at a different time. OK, you failed to warn me. And then a nigga might have died or not died. And you wasn't going to have to worry yourself about it. Is that uh, fair enough to say? And, uh, you know, she looks around and then she says, yes. You know, that's exactly what happened. And he was just like, okay, that's all I needed. Okay, I, I just needed you to do that. I'm assigning the state over to you. And also I have this recording in my pocket. I'm going to give this to the FBI and they're going to arrest you. <laughs> he didn't tell her that, but um, we saw it. But Claudia fixing to be molded, scratched the neck. So after he leave, you know, now Claudia, she feeling herself. Hell, she, damn it, what? 
she about to work with the Serbs. You know, she got the other cartel that they working with. You know, she untouchable over there. You know, she working with Shantae, the showstopper, the Viagra Triangle. Um, Daddy dead. We ain't got to worry about him no more. You know, she calling things. She running things. Like, exactly where she needs to be. So, she's feeling herself. And so, why not invite our lover over? You know, her lover, the one that's loved her since seventh grade. All right. Well, you know what? Hell, we in here. You know what would really piss my daddy off is if we fucked right here on this couch, okay? And her girlfriend was just like, well, I don't see why we shouldn't oblige then. And so then we got a love scene between um, uh, Claudia and her girl. And I was just like, oh, I know Walter is fucking rolling over in his grave. I could just hear him right now. Claudia, are you shiting me? You're fucking in me office. Are you shiting me? Get your dumb arse off of me couch and out of me house. I'm sure that's not a scene that Walter would have wanted to see. <laughs> so after a little bit of love and canoodling, you know, facing the place and scissoring and whatnots, um, now Claudia's feeling like a new woman. So you know what? She go and she get the crew. Mirkovich, Shantae, the showstopper, you know. We go on down there to the people. We was just like, okay. Well, no, I'm sorry. She's with Shantae. And she's talking to Mirkovich like, hey, get in touch with our old boy, the cartel, you know, because he wanted to know if we was going to get this money together to get in. And we got the money. So now we want to buy in. Mirkovich is looking at her. He was just like, hmm. Okay, well, let me tell you something. I'm only working with you. I ain't working with this black bitch and your old hoe and whoever else. I, I ain't, We ain't doing that. Okay. And, um, you know, Shantae, the showstopper, was like, bitch, you named me. <laughs> and, um, oh, girl, the hoe, she was just like, yeah, I don't care. You know, whichever, I can be a silent partner. That's fine. And Shantae don't do silent. Claudia was like, it's okay, Shantae. I could be the, you know, the contact person for this man. All right, as long as I'm still getting my money, we can call you the boss if you want. So, you know, Claudia's like, okay, she's going to be running it. She got the location for the business and everything. So, hey, Claudia's on it. Now, Miguel, boy, 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 boy. <laughs> Miguel at the house drinking. He feeling mighty, mighty, mighty low. Why this motherfucker madder than a junkyard dog, okay? His homeboy come in and he can already see Miguel's face. He like, fuck, it's about to be some shit. You know, Miguel was just like, did you get rid of his body? So did. He was just like, I, that motherfucker tried to hit up our, you know, tried to hit us up, kill our big mama. Big mama would be proud. Miguel look at him. He throw his fucking bottle at the wall. He said, this, that, that woman ain't happy. She mad as fuck. The Serbs is the reason that I failed and Tommy Egan took all of the credit. But you know what? That fucking mean. I'm gonna kill that nigga tonight. Okay, because Tommy Egan, he too dangerous alive. That's the conclusion that you came up with. You got a whole bunch of other problems. Tommy should be the least of them right now. You need to fix all this other stuff, Miguel. You need to learn how to not have tunnel vision. Okay? But, 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 but Miguel can't even see straight. I said, Miguel, you'd be awfully mad to know that right now Tommy and Marae are in bed together. And they plotting and scheming to run off to, to Barcelona. She's so happy. She ready to go. Tommy was just like, I just got one more thing. One more thing. And then we can get on the plane and ride off to Barcelona. She, Barcelona. She was just like, well, you know what, Tommy? Honestly, we could just have a one-way ticket. Because you guys didn't know that Y-Class tickets, they can be open. You can do it just one way round trip. He was just like, well, Maria, you know that I'll go anywhere with you. But... He always gonna come back to these streets, honey, because the streets be what? Calling him. Like Smokey. And she was just like, yeah, I know. Unfortunately, she knows, you know. So Tommy's looking at her, he throw her bone. He says, hey, but I am real happy about the fact that, uh, you know, you chose me over your family. That's just big, okay? He didn't expect that. And she was just like, well, you know, Tommy, you know, you make me feel so good on the inside and the outside. You make me feel good, family. You are the one for me. You see me. I see you, you know, kind of like Rashida and D'Lo. We not here, but we here. So anyway, they're having this heart-to-heart -heart conversation, and then there's a bang at the door. Boom, 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 boom. Okay? They both look at each other like, who the fuck coming over here? I said, like, I don't know, but I sure hope it ain't the Jehovah's Witness, because they about to get shot. <laughs> he, uh, he go to the door, and it's Kate. You know, she's like, oh, my God, oh, my God. He was like, Ma, what are you doing here? You can't stay here. 
If she was just like, I wasn't trying to stay here. I wanted to come here to talk to you. When she turns around, she sees Maria. She's looking. She's like, who the fuck is this? And then um, she was just like, yeah, I'm Maria. You know, he was like, that's the nurse from the hospital that he'll d -mack, you know. Does she know what you do? And she was just like, as a matter of fact, I do know what he does. And I'm good with it. Because that's my man and I love him. And don't you worry about me because I grew up... And don't you worry about me because I've been in danger all my life and I know how to handle myself. So thank you. And I was like, bitch, don't you talk to my mama like that. I can give a fuck. Okay. I can cuss my mama out and give her crack cocaine and let her get strung out and almost overdose. But you can't say shit to her. But yeah. Even though Kay tried to throw Lakeisha Grant at her, you know, she was, I was just like, honey, there's other women too. Why you so big and bad, Maria? But Kate, just let her learn the hard way, girl. Kate tries to tell Tommy when she leaves, like, girl, Tommy. I'm the only woman that stays in your life. Why do you even give your, why you waste your time trying to be with these women? And he was just like, you know what, mom, I'm gonna give you this crack, this cocaine, put it in your pocket and get the hell out of my house. Don't come back. I was just like, who gives their mother a thing of cocaine? Like you really want your mom to overdose, Tommy? Now, I, let me just say that this was the part in the show where everything really started to aggravate me. And I was just like, this is Tariq 2.0 is Darnell. Oh my God. I can't even explain to you guys how much it is. So anyway, and now D-Mac, I'm, excuse me, D-Mac. D-Mac on the road, back out on these streets. And lo and behold, who does he see out there, you guys? That's right, Mad Dog. Hey, yo, you Mad Dog 2020? Mad Dog turned around and he looked at him. He was just like, do I know you? He was like, nigga, you don't know me, but you about to know me. And he's like, pow, 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 all wild armed and everything. I said, any gun instructor will tell you that D-Mac would have probably shot his own self in his thigh, then turned around and shot somebody up in the sky, the sky, you know, a damn building with the fifth floor. Somebody just happened to peek out because this nigga is shooting all wild and willy nilly and crazy. Thank God he hit mad dog. This fool shoots this boy in the middle of the day, middle of the park all out in the open everybody can see all right this nigga all even got his phone out he's recording it taking pictures and shit okay like we'll wait till i show him this just as stupid you guys so then he go back to diamonds uh to the shop you know and diamond see him he was just like i thought your uncle took care of you and he was just like yeah he took care of me and everything at least that's what he thought but guess what i took care of you okay diamond was just like what you do Okay, well, you know what, D-Mac was like, I heard, you know, about what was going on on the streets and how, you know, CBI couldn't get involved. You couldn't get your hands dirty. So I went and did it for you. I went and killed that nigga mad dog. I shot you. I shot him for you. And Diamond was like, you did what? You stupid ass motherfucker. Do you know what you did? And D-Mac stupid ass. You know what? I just want to be back in CBI. Just let me in. That shit run through my veins. I am CBI. Just be cool. Just be cool. Diamond is looking at uh, Darnell like, nigga, if you don't go somewhere with your old corny ass, okay? I ought to kill you right now, but it ain't even going to do no good right now. Okay? He, Diamond is just looking at him so disgusted. Here go that D-Mac over there just uh, going on. and You just fucked everything up. We needed King Kilo. And now you done fucked all this up. And he was like, oh, my bad. My bad, Unc. What we, what, Diamond, what we gonna do? Nigga, what we gonna do? What we gonna do? The, nigga, don't come over here and ask me what we gonna do. You the one that shot him. You the one that came back in town. You the one that shot somebody else, too. Like, what? And nigga, no, this, this ain't we. So, you know, that damn Diamond, he just shaking his head like, oh. God, I'll tell you that, Tommy. I told him to take care of this damn nephew. So later on, he talking to Jannard and he tells Jannard how somebody saw Darnell out there in them streets shooting old boy just like they knew that they would. You know, so now the word on the street is CBI is the one that killed Mad Dog. Oh, man, this bad. Do King Kilo know yet? Diamond was just like, no, he don't know. But, you know, it's just going to be a matter of time. They're going to let him know even if he in jail. And then that's going to be they ass. Okay, more drama. They, they really needed this connection and look at what then happened so Jannar was just like yeah this is bad we really need them and he was like yeah and Tommy gonna lose his shit when he find out and and, and Jannar was just like come on bro why are you still talking about Tommy why don't you talk to King Kilo yourself and Diamond was just like man you know I can't go back down there I'm an inmate a former inmate I'm a felon 
I ain't going back there. So then uh, Jannar was just like, oh, my bad. I'm sorry. I was tripping. Yeah, you right. You can't go down there. How about I go down there and talk to King Kilo? I'll just tell him that when he get out, I will deliver D-Mac to him dead or alive. And um, Diamond was just like, oh, hmm. Then he looked at the car. He said, that's you? Okay, this is like a 1988 <laughs> Oldsmobile Cutlass Supreme. <laughs> and damn, Diamond, Diamond was looking at him like smirking it. And uh, Janar was just like, what, nigga? This this a classic. And, you know, Diamond was like, for real? He said, yeah, nigga, don't, quit looking at my core. Now, jumping back over to Vic. So, Vic is over at Tommy's house. And, you know, Vic's job, his last job, supposedly, that Stacy gave him is he has to find out the time and the place of this meeting, right? So, he finds out from Tommy. And, of course, Stacy is listening. So, this is good. Finally, Vic, you solid. It's time for you to go. Okay, nigga, I wouldn't be surprised if they wasn't waiting outside around the corner to whisk you off to witness protection now. So, Tommy tells him, you know, I want you to be there. You know, and uh, Vic was just like, okay, don't worry. I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. So, you know, now Stacy is feeling herself. She's like, we fucking got him. Okay, set up a raid. You know, let's make this shit happen. And, you know, investigator hubby is just like, mm, I don't know, Stace. He said, just back up. I know you happy and everything, but this don't sound right. This don't sound like they natural. This is not fitting the profile. She's I don't give a fuck, uh, uh, hubby. Listen here, it's done. It is happening. I am raiding. I'm going to get my people. You know, she's all excited. He's just like, oh, this ain't going to end well. But but who can tell Stacy anything when she's like this? I said, your best bet was when you was fucking her, but obviously you didn't do that right either. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, Stacy goes to the team and she tells them, you know, if the, by this time tomorrow, we will be delivering a uh, A plus case to the DA, you know, a uh, Rico case uh, with the Serbs and, you know, all of the cartels and the Flins and uh, Tommy and CBI. And, you know, she telling them all this. And one of the ladies is like, good. OK, I hope that they kill Tommy's ass in the crossfire because, you know, he killed Vargas. Vic is like, where you need me to meet? You know, you can come school me up on the street like I already got my shit packed and everything like I'm ready to go and she's just like oh no Vic you cannot go now and he was just like this is bullshit Stacy it's only been bullshit Vic that's all Stacy do is bullshit you okay but he was just like I wouldn't you just told me it just just earlier that if I do what you wanted me to do, which was get the date and the time, that I would be free. And she was just like, but if you don't go this time, then Tommy's going to know that we know. Okay? It's going to look too suspicious for him. So, yeah, you got to go. We sorry, but this is it. This is really it. For real, for real now. We really, for real mean it that you for real, for real don't have to do it. This the last one for real, for real. We ain't playing for real. It's for real, for real. Not for play, play, but for real, for real. Just that. And then what they're going to do is they're going to arrest him with everybody else. And then they're going to whisk him off to witness protection. I mean, what can Vic do? He, he, he's like, that's going to have to do. So he gets off the phone with her and he's at the, the grave site and he's telling this girl, Gloria, well, Gloria, I did it all. Okay. Fixing to, you know, get the hell up out of here, about to be in witness protection, leaving this whole life behind. Tommy is out and about and Claudia decides to hit him up with her crew. Okay. So it's Claudia and her girl and Shantae and all that. And, you know, uh, Tommy is actually amused by this. And she walks up to him and she's just like, you should have killed me when you had the chance, Tommy. I'm untouchable now. I wake with this person. I, t I sleep with that person. I talk to that person. I do this. I do that. I'm everything, you know. Tommy looks over at Shantae. He was like, oh, so you working with this bitch now? You know, and she was like, that's queen bitch to you, nigga. And, you know, Tommy still has his plans to take Claudia down. So he's just looking at her like, mm, girl, just keep on living. Now... Back over to your boy, Darnell. Now, Darnell is feeling away, I guess, because Diamond ain't, uh, you know, just exactly jumped for joy that Mad Dog had been killed, right? So he now he all anxious. And, Nigga, what's wrong with you? Okay, so he get home and, you know, what JP see him, he said, Darnell, what you doing just coming in here like that? Tommy could have been here. And he was just like, man, fuck Tommy. I don't give a fuck about Tommy, you, this lady. I don't give a damn about nobody. I'm just here to get my shit and go. This ain't my family. The streets is my fucking family. Yeah, the streets is your family. And you don't know that your family is going to kill you. Okay, if they can get their fingers on you. You stupid. JP was just like, Darnell. And he was like, it's D-Mac. And then Kate jumps in. And she was just like, oh, no, honey. Don't come here. Come here. Talk to your grandmother. He's like, and what the fuck wrong with you? Why are you talking to me like I'm always some nine-year-old child? I don't even know you, lady. I was like, oh. 
Oh, it's about to get personal like that. Like that, D-Mac, you had to hurt the poor lady's feelings. That granny. Do you have dementia? I don't know you. Okay, so now Kate back up. Like, damn, my bad. Fuck it, then. JP still goes in for one more move. Come here. And, and Darnell was like, get your hands off of me, F word. And it wasn't fuck. And he said it so loud and strong, honey. Everybody was took the, taking a bag. And I was just like, damn, D-Mac. Did you just call your daddy that? You know this man care about you. Why you had to say something so damn foul? Fine, little nigga, take your ass on. Fuck you. You going out there and you live your life the way that you think that your life should be lived. And then don't come back here when the shit fall apart. That's if you make it through the damn night. Can't stand that damn D-Mac. So he leaves, runs off into the night. I guess he is a child of the street now. Now, Jannard goes and talks to King Kilo at, at the at the um, jailhouse. And let me tell you, King Kilo, this, is, this ain't a little nigga. This is your tiny lister, you know, that type. You know, Debo big. He shake Jannard's hand. He almost crushed Jannard's head. Jannard's like, can I nigga, can he get his hand back? Thank you. <laughs> So King Kilo tell him word around the streets, word in this prison is that CBI is the one that killed his nephew. And Jannard was just like, you know what? I know for a fact that CBI didn't kill your nephew and I can deliver to you the man who did do it. He ain't even CBI no more. His name is D-Mac. He a problem for you just like he a problem for us. Okay. But listen, Jannard wants King Kilo to not act too hastily. Listen, we making a whole bunch of money. Everybody is making a lot of money. This coalition, and you know, even though it pains them to say that Tommy got it together, it was a great idea. Everybody is just making buku cash. So we got to play this thing right. You know, CBI ain't had nothing to do with that. So you, you can handle that with your people. And then I promise you, when you step out, I'll be the one to deliver him to you dead or alive. Okay. And King, King Kilo was just like, well, I mean, that's about the best anybody can do for him right now. You know what? That sound like you got a deal. Now, Tommy's about to get out to work. He about to go pick up Vic. He sends him a text message or calls him or whatever and tells him he on his way. And then he um, gets in his car and it's a pow. Okay. Window explodes. Then we hear all of these pow, 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 you know, and then it's the which usually sign signifies that um, somebody is dead laying on the horn. He walk up and all of that, you know, checking on Tommy. And then, of course, Tommy turns around and beats him up and shit. And, well, long story short, he kills old boy. Okay? That's another one of Miguel's boys. And I said, boy, that Miguel. Now, this nigga gonna be piping, piping hot. When... Ooh-wee, stroke level. Stroke level is... <laughs> Is only where, only place that Miguel is going. I was cracking up because Tommy was just like, uh, you know what, um, today's your lucky day, all right? Let your boy know that we fixing to take this shit over, all right? You, 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 we about to take it all over, his shit too. Let him know that, okay? And he was just like, so you just gonna let me go? And Tommy was like, yeah. And then they, that man got up and walked away and Tommy just shot him in his fucking back. <laughs> I said, Tommy, you know it. Tommy was just like, eh, I'll tell him myself. <laughs> Best scene of the episode. That shit had me laughing. No, they've had some good scenes, though, but that was definitely one of them. Now, SWAT. Child, listen, that Dale Stacy, she done got all the boys. She done called his special favors. She got the team all together. You know, they all in their SWAT gear. They go out jumping out the truck, you know, hip, 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 hip. You know, SWAT be at it, you know. So they got their assignment, and they are here to do a job. Stacy is watching. She was just like, I finally got Tommy Egan. Put it on the big screen, okay? Because Stacy is watching from, you know, ground zero. Like, she's a fucking president or something, okay? Just as proud of herself. I was just like, yeah, let's watch this failure on TV. I was almost giddy at how I knew that this was about to fall through for Miss Stacy. She all like, yeah, come on. Yeah. Okay, breathe it hard as shit. Calm down, Stacy. I'm telling you, this ain't gonna go your way. So anyway, we watching on there and long story short, they busting there, they shooting and shooting and shooting and shit. It ain't nobody there. You know, they they still don't get their guy and all of that. And Stacy is just like, what the fuck? It's not Egan, it's the Serbs. Okay. So even though they didn't get Tommy Egan, they actually do get the Serbs. They actually do get Claudia. I was like, well, I mean, at least Stacy, the shit wasn't a full bus, okay? Like, you, 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 you're not gonna look crazy now. You know, we all watch it on the TV and everything. This wasn't a failure, but oh, yes, it was. It was to Stacy. Stacy was just like, where's the fuck is Vic? 
Honey, Vic don't even know where Vic is. Vic is like, what's going on? Vic was like, I thought, I, I, I thought that at, that the uh, meeting I, that you was telling me about. I thought you said like the meeting was on the north side. Like we not going in the north side direction. And Tommy was just like, yeah, uh, the, the the plans got changed. Okay. I said, boy, Vic, I know your stomach is sore. I know you is nervous. But Tommy is stretching this out. So I'm like, what's his plan? Because Tommy's had so many opportunities to really hand it to Vic and kill him. That is clear that he's not going to kill him. But what exactly are you going to do, Tommy? Well, you know, he's like, you know how things turn out for people who turn on me. And Vic was like, I'm quite aware. But, you know, Tim, Vic's still not 100% sure. He's about 99%, though. Go with the 99, Vic. Because all this is going on, but the shooting is still happening with the with the Stacy and her crew. And at the end of that shooting, um, one of Stacy's crew, they killed. They did. Okay? And, of course, everybody is pissed. Inc investigator Hubby, we need an ambulance. We need an ambulance, you know? And she was like, where the hell is Vic? So Tommy, in the spirit of transparency, he tells Vic that uh, they hemmed up uh, Claudia and Mirkovich tonight. The Serbs, they done. Claudia had no idea that none of this was happening, that it was coming, you know. So she, of course, realizes that her brother set her up. But really, Vic, Vic didn't even know all that was going on. Okay, that's all the, the brains of Tommy. And, but yeah, Stacy, Stacy is still like, where's Tommy Egan? And they was just like, really? We lost one of our own. Are you even worried about that? I'm aware that Rankin is dead. And I'm also aware that Tommy Egan is still out there. We did not win. We did not accomplish our job. He was just like, babe, come on. Why can't you just enjoy this win? I mean, we don't have them all, but we got a good amount right now. Like, what's wrong? I don't enjoy the win because I didn't win. I win when I get Tommy Egan. I said, oh, God, Stacy is about to have a conniption. Somebody help her. Where is Maria? We need a nurse. So, yeah, she was just like, y'all can be happy with the little piddly shit that y'all got, but my standards is higher. I still need Egan. Now, Tommy... He does meet with Shay. He does tell them that they, you know, that they, they got the coalition going. It's going very well. He's making them all some good, good, good money. They, he explains to them how they're doing all of Miguel's job for him already. So they might as well just always do it. Get rid of Miguel. Well, Shay was like, we going to keep Miguel, but we also going to put you in there. You know, you and CBI, you know, y'all going to have what y'all need. And he was just like, okay, fine. I'm happy with that as well. So Shay going to arrange a meeting for everybody to get together since we all on this coalition brotherhood tip, you know. Um, uh, Tommy was like, that shit going to be real interesting. And Diamond was like, yeah, tell me about it. But Tommy is still feeling good. You know, when he sends Maria a, a text, girl, pack your bags. We going to Barcelona. But boy, that Stacy is mad. Her ex-husband just tries to appeal to her soft side one more time. Like, listen, we have the rest. I know you want Egan, but let's, you know, you, you doing this right. And she was just like, bullshit, you was mad at me. And you should have just let me go on and uh, arrest Tommy back when, when he said that he killed him. Now look at this mess. And he was just looking at her like, really? So now you blaming the shit on me? Yes, because if I did, then everybody would still be alive. So, oh, now Vargas and Rankin's death is on, on Investigator Hubby, huh? I said, see there, Investigator Hubby, you were so busy trying to talk to her and everything. This girl is crazy. She gonna do what she want to do. She just didn't use you. She used you. Investigator Hubby, he's so sick of her. He was just like, you know, you would make a great politician. Just a fucking liar. Okay, he out. Oh, Stacy can't worry about that. Hell, she got a girlfriend any damn way. <laughs> now, Shay tells the insane princess and the CBI, tell everybody that we need, I need y'all to, to play nice, okay? This is the meeting that he was saying that, you know, Tommy needed to have with it. So, Miguel and Tommy, you guys hug it out, okay? We all one part, you know, one team, one body, one voice, one band, one sound. I need you to behave as gentlemen. And um, so Tommy and Miguel sh uh, shake hands. But, you know, it was like typical, like two badass kids that really can't stand each other. But both their parents are standing there telling them they, be they need to shake hands and act like they friends and love each other. You know, <laughs> OK, so they both looking at each other. And uh, Tommy says, hey, uh, Miguel, where's your homeboy? What was his name? You know, the one, you know, the one that 
uh, Miguel sent to kill Tommy. Yeah, that one. All right. But he doesn't say that. But Miguel knows who he means. He was just like, oh, yeah, he couldn't be here. And, Miguel, and Tommy was just like, oh, yeah, I like him. Where is he at? Okay, he not here. Well, Tommy knows where he's at. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. Now, Miguel is even madder. I don't know what the next level after stroke level is, it is and, until you just finally just stroke out. But. Now, now, Claudia's in jail and Claudia's just trying to figure out who did this to her. Okay. I was just like, Claudia, you should absolutely know who did this to you. But I guess she's got to go through the emotions and the emotions or whatever. So she calls uh, Shantae, the showstopper. And, you know, Shantae is big and bad on that phone now. You know, hell, we don't need you no more, Claudia. And when Claudia is talking to Shantae, then Tommy is there. Okay, surprise, surprise. I forgot to tell you guys that Vic actually did confirm to Tommy that Claudia is the one who killed Liliana. All right. Back when, when Tommy was giving Vic the he hate a traitor speech so um tommy gets on the phone he's just like hey what's up girl i got something for you and um you know she's looking like white as a sheet like she saw a ghost and the next thing you know somebody walks up behind her and shanks her stabs her one time you know right here look like a good kidney hit you know and um just walks off and so she's just like bleeding out there like oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I was like, hang in there, hang in there, Claudia. It was just one shank. I mean, at least a girl could have gave her three or four of them. But maybe this one is just going to have to do. Didn't want to bring too much attention to herself, obviously. So Tommy is proud. Good work, Shantae. You know what? They work well together in secret. She was like, I'm all in now. Like, wh whatever you need me to do, I'm yours. And he was just like, yeah, let's just continue to be enemies on the streets for now. He needs her, though. He needs her to go get something. Okay, what is that something? Well, hold on, because now Tommy has to go back to the house. And when he walks in, child, Kate is overdosing on the carpet. I said, Kate. You know, Tommy's looking at, he's like, damn, Ma, did you use all that coke I gave you? Okay, you was only supposed to just doll it out a little bit at a time. You, nigga, you know she's an addict. You know, Tommy just looking at her like, oh, I'm gonna let you suffer a little bit longer. You know, and then JP come in there. He see her down there. He was just like, what's going on here? Why are you just standing there, Kate? Kate, are you all right? Call the ambulance. What did you do, Tommy? Call 911. So, uh, yeah, we have gone and called 911. They rushed him to the hospital. All right. Tommy didn't ride with the ambulance. Go, t go figure. So, he, now he's trying to figure out where his family is. What rooms are they in, you know? So, he stops somebody and he tells them, like, tell my, you know, we in here, this the Tommy Egan family, find Maria and let her know that she need to come over here. Like, this nigga just giving orders. Child, she a nurse. She got um things to do. She can't just be running behind you and your damn stupid ass family, okay? But um, he was like, tell them to come. And she was like, oh, Maria didn't come in today. And he turns around. He's like, what? Because specifically, Maria was like, I'm going to be late for work. So we know that she was headed towards work didn't make it so yeah tommy is there at the hospital and um now all of a sudden he's concerned how is she and uh jp was just like well you know she got a long road ahead of her she almost died because of you she came to your house because she wanted to tell you that she was going back to rehab that she was going to work the steps and you gave her more drugs what's wrong with you tommy that jp so disgusted with tommy he give him his keys he was like that's that's to the bar i don't want nothing to do with the bar with you you gotta get out okay I said, damn, JP, it's like that. That's really how you do your brother, Tommy. I mean, Tommy, do 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 shit a little fucked up. And I mean, let's just agree that you don't understand the relationship that Tommy has with his mom. And maybe you need to stay out of it. You cultivate your own shit with your mama. Let Tommy handle cake the way he want to. And then if you don't want to fuck with the bar, fine. Okay, but all this flip-flop and switching back and forth and all of this that JP is doing has really gotten on my nerves because JP seems to think that he better than everybody these damn days. Yeah, JP told Tommy everything that you touch, you ruin. Okay, is that right? That's why you still alive and your damn son still alive, but everything I touch, I ruin, huh? Mm. Okay. 
Remember that in the memory bank. I said, Tommy, it's okay. It's probably best that you don't have no family. You seem to work better when you didn't have people that you cared about. Now, Tommy goes to celebrate with his crew. All right, the coalition is working the way it's supposed to. Everybody is making more money, more money, more money. It's all good. So now Tommy's moved on to the next plan, which is taking Miguel out. Diamond was like, I thought you was gonna push back harder with Che. But Tommy said, no, he's slowing his roll. And Diamond was just like, okay, where are they dumping Vic's body? And Tommy was just like, well, actually, they not dumping his body okay and you know that's not what diamond wants to hear because vic needs to be gone he is the snitch what's the plan well they're holding vic while he's there you know he gets a phone call and it's stacy he was just like what the fuck is going on she was just like where the fuck are you he was just like i don't know what the fuck is going on she said don't you lie to me vic it was just like i'm not lying to you stacy i'm laying low did you guys get tommy well no and here's the conundrum that we have found ourselves in. So yeah, she, she is like, you know, they she got set up too. And he was just like, I mean, that was just like, well, you got Claudia and the serves. I mean, number of people that you wanted too. Yeah, but that was not the big dog. And so now that he knows that Claudia has been arrested, he was just like, well, that means that Tommy must have made me. Like, I am in danger right now. I got to get off this phone with you, girl. Okay. So then all of a sudden, child, Stacy, she hopped to it. I don't know what didn't happen to Stacy. Now all of a sudden she care about Vic. We have got to get down now before they kill Vic. I mean, just with all the conviction and the, all of this in her voice. And I was like, bitch, you was just saying you ain't gave a damn about Vic. Now all of a sudden we got to rush. Which one you wanted to be, Stacy? Child, I know they sick of good and good and sick and tired of Stacy down there. That damn Stacy so wild. That damn Stacy so wound up. I said, this bitch need a vacation. Let, let her go with y'all to Barcelona. <laughs> Anyway, Diamond is just telling Tommy, like, you were supposed to get rid of Vic. Now you telling me you keeping him around? Like, what is going on? Well, Tommy has this other plan. Tommy now believes that he's going to keep Vic alive because they can make him an FBI informant. Do you know how powerful they would be having somebody inside the FBI be able to tell him what's coming on? You know, like, to Tommy feels like this plan is amazing. And Diamond was like, yeah, that's all fine and good and everything. But just tell me this. Why is it every time I turn around, you changing the plan? It almost feels like you trying to keep one step ahead of me. Okay. Yeah, think, Diamond. Maybe Tommy is trying to stay one step ahead of you. Tommy says he takes all opportunities. And if that means being a step or two ahead of you, which is not hard to do, Diamond, then, then, then so be it. Tommy was just like, so you think that you could have got all this without me? And Diamond was just like, no, I never said that. I didn't say I couldn't do it without you. But what I can say is that you wouldn't be alive if I wasn't backing you. If the CBI wasn't, bro you know, vouching for you, then you would be dead. So yeah, and pay a nigga some respect around here. This is where we see that the the chinks, the kinks in the armor, I always want to say chinks, the kinks in the armor is getting messed up here. You know, Tommy was just like, I just made the biggest deal in CBI history. And Diamond was like, correction, we just made the biggest deal in CBI history. See, nigga, you need to get your head up out your ass because you think that you running all of it and really you couldn't do it without us. Okay, Diamond is trying to tell Tommy without telling him that, listen, you still need me. I know you feeling like you don't, but you do. Now, Jannard is so happy about the turn of the recent turn of events. You know, shit, baby, we are sitting on top of the world. She was just like, you right about that? I got that white boy up under my thumb. Miguel don't know that we sent this, right? Now, what did, she, what did they send Miguel? Did they tell Miguel something about Tommy? I don't remember. You guys can re can put that in there. But whatever they done did, they done told Miguel some shit about Tommy. And they know that Miguel is going to be pissed off. And nobody is even going to know that they were the ones that told Miguel. And Miguel going to take Tommy out for them. They ain't going to have to do nothing. We just sit back and we just enjoy the show. Get a little popcorn, you know, little wine, a little libation, and just enjoy it all. And then it jumps back over to Tommy and we see Tommy get a call. Hey, babe, you know, where you been? I've been trying to reach you all day. And, um, Tommy, why are you answering your phone saying, hey, babe? Just so not smart, especially when you haven't been able to reach her all day. Of course, Miguel was just like, oh, babe, huh? No, this ain't babe. This is Miguel, babe's sister, brother. 
Babe's brother don't like the fact that you guys have been seeing each other behind my back. So you know what, babe? You not gonna talk to babe no more. You not gonna see babe no more. Tommy was just like, if you do something to her, like, he, you know, like he got the upper hand. And I told you guys that Miguel is on a whole nother level past stroke level. So whatever this level is, is you know, Miguel is there. And Tommy was just like, if you hurt her, you know, he swear he gonna do something to Miguel. He don't know what, but he gonna do it. It's gonna be bad and it's gonna hurt. And Miguel just laughs and hangs up the phone. And Tommy is just sitting there and he's just boiling. And then that's the way it ends. And I was just like, mm -hmm. Doll, anyway, let me get off of here. Make sure that you thumbs up the video, comment, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. I'm It's Rocks. The channel is It's Rocks. Everything else I do will be in the bottom bar. All right, all right. So I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day. And I plan on doing the same. Till next time, rock stars. Bye.